Hello everyone and welcome back. As always, I'm your girl Candy Washington and before we dive into today's Kiki, which is revealing some of Kyle and Mauricio's dark and twisted past of fraud and cheating allegations, you guys know what to do. Go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it when we go live. Also, be sure to share this with a friend because a kiki and a good old conspiracy is always better with community. And check out our description box down below. And also be sure to shop our love collection. And before we dive in, don't forget, everything is always alleged, rumored, and opinion-based. When I say the disturbing truth, I mean, you know, what's out there, what's in the blogs, what's being reported on, the deep dives. So with that, let's dive right on in. So I thought we should start with some of the fraud allegations against Mauricio. <clears throat> so as we all know, Mauricio Umansky is Kyle Richards' husband. They've been married for about 26, 27, ridiculous amount of time. They've been married forever. And some of you guys have asked, well, how did they get their money? You know, when they started The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, sure, they were well off, but they weren't you know, the wealth that they have today, which is estimated at around $100 million. And so people are like, well, how did they make, you know, $100 million over like a decade where when they started out, they were sort of more modest means. We all know sort of the background of, you know, Mauricio working for Hilton and Highland, which was Kyle's sister's Rick Hilton's company. They had a big falling out. We'll get into all of that as we do a deeper dive, but some of these fraud allegations might shed some light on how they were able to amass all of this money in such a short period of time. So let's read. <clears throat> this is from the Daily Mail, and it says, Kyle Richards' husband, Mauricio Umansky, settles fraud lawsuit over $32 million Malibu mansion, okay? Let's get into some of the details. Oof, 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 oof. Mauricio Umansky, the husband of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Kyle Richards, has reached a settlement that will end a lawsuit accusing him of fraud. Oh, you guys, also, before I dive in, we're going to start with the fraud, and then we'll move into cheating allegations, and then into um, a bombshell cheating accusation I found. This isn't necessarily new tea, but I think it might be new tea to a lot of people and it's very explosive. Okay, so just want to say that. So let's keep going. So according to court documents attained by the blast, Umansky and his real estate company, the agency, were able to come to terms of a deal with Sweetheart Malibu LLC that centered on the sale of a $32 million mansion. Both parties had confirmed that they are in agreement on the principal terms of a settlement that would resolve the case. At issue, a Malibu mansion that had been seized by the United States government from Teodoro Nugama Obiang Mangwe, a man who allegedly used funds stolen from his home country, Equatorial Guinea, Mangwe is the son of the president. Umansky then sold the property to a man named Mauricio Oberfield for $32.5 million. The sale was approved by the United States government. However, the seller claimed Umansky 49 and his company failed to inform him that they had received much higher offers. Plus, the plaintiff accused Dumansky of never disclosing that he had partnered with the buyer to purchase the property. One year after making the purchase, Umansky and the partner sold the home, the same exact home, for $69.9 million, which was about a $37 million profit. Okay. 
Sweetwater Malibu LLC, a company run by Teodoro, claimed Umansky breached his duties as their realtor. Okay. Court papers stated defendants violated virtually every one of these duties by engaging in blatant acts of self-dealing, earning secret profits, and both failing to disclose and outright misrepresenting material facts. Umansky and the agency denied the allegation and accused him of attempting to regain control of the money he forfeited to the United States. The case was headed to trial on March 31st, 2020, but both parties involved are asking the court to set a hearing later this month in hopes of avoiding a trial with their finalized settlement. Okay, you guys. So basically, the cliff notes on that is that Mauricio double dealed his client. So his client came to him, he had this huge estate in Malibu. He had to sell it because the client was in some, you know, political financial trouble. He did his own bad dealings and he owed a $10 million fine to the US and he had to sell this mansion. So basically what Mauricio did was say, "Oh, well here's the offer" and he lowballed it for like $32 million. He failed to disclose that he was one of the people buying the property. So him and his other partner, Mauricio Oberfield, bought the property for this really low amount. And then a year later, they flipped it for a $37 million profit. And that is illegal. Yes, your real estate agent could theoretically buy your house from you, but they have to A, disclose that they are the person who is buying the house, whether they're buying it by themselves or in partnership with other people the way Mauricio does. And B, your real estate agent legally has to give you every single offer that comes on your house. And you are the one who decides whether you take it or not. What Mauricio allegedly was doing, he knew how much the property was actually valued at since he was able to sell it for basically $70 million, but he wasn't disclosing that to the client and he lowballed him. It's about the difference of about $40 million. So if he was doing that on this level, if he was doing that with a government agency, because the guy owed money to the United States government for a $40 million profit, well, no wonder him and Kyle now are worth $100 million. Imagine how many other times they've done that with A, without getting caught, or B, without getting sued, or C, getting sued but it not going public. This is just one example. So if him and his partner was able to, you know, dupe his client out of $40 million on one deal, now you have to wonder where he got all the rest of his money came from. All right, now let's get into some more allegations here. All right, now this is according to heavy.com, okay? Fans dig up past Mauricio Umansky's scandalous behavior, okay? Fans have dug up accusations of questionable business behavior levied against the husband of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Kyle Richards in 2018. According to the Los Angeles Times article published in 2018, an insurance company accused real, and this is a different, a different one, an insurance company accused real estate um, broker Mauricio Umansky of selling a home for millions less than it was worth for personal gain. So this same scheme. Here's what you need to know. Okay. <clears throat> the insurance company Western World sued after it looked like it might be on the hook to pay $3 million as a part of a potential settlement between Umansky and their original seller, the Times reported. Ooh, 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 ooh. As part of the settlement, some of the proceeds of the home sale were to be distributed to different charities. Umansky shortchanged charities and the Central African nation out of millions of dollars they should have received. At 
the time, Umansky denied the allegations against him. The issue was settled in 2019 after both parties said that they were in great in agreement on the principal terms of a settlement that would resolve the case according to court documents. Wow. So this is even another one. And this, this goes on to say, lessons learned. Never go on reality TV if you have skeletons, even the ones you forgot. Piss off the internet and they will start digging up and sending information to the IRS and federal agencies, some run wrote. I have a feeling this is just the beginning and there are some former disgruntled employees that will start helping investigations. I never understood why people willingly sign up for these shows knowing they have secret marriage they have secrets the marriage is in shambles it seems very delusional to think the public won't catch on. So this franchise has all of the scammers, a eh? someone pointed out alluding to fellow castmate Erica Jane's lawsuit. Speaking of Erica Jane's lawsuit, let's move on to the next fraud. So this is from law.com. Okay? This is another um, scandal that he has been involved in. Actually, before we move on to law.com, let's read about another fraudulent case he was involved in. And then we'll get into the one with law.com and what's going on with that one, okay? So we're gonna go back. And this is from All About the Tea. And this one says, Mauricio Umansky hit with new lawsuit for $4.5 million amid his crumbling real estate business. Mauricio Umansky was slapped with another lawsuit accusing him of fraud connected to the sale of a, 30, of a $32 million mansion. Real estate agent Aiton Segal filed suit against Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Kyle Umansky's husband because he represented a buyer looking to buy a Malibu mansion listed by Umansky. The buyer made an offer of $40 million to Umansky. Mr. Aiton Segal asserts that Mauricio Umansky secretly orchestrated a deal to buy the home himself with investors and flipped it for a huge profit. Same scheme. Mr. Segal is seeking $4.5 million in damages for the lost commissions. Oof, 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 oof. As reported, Mauricio Umansky was accused of intentionally selling a 15,000 square foot mansion for millions less than what it was worth and in order, in order to later personally profit from the resale. So this is what we had just previously talked about, the Sweetwater Malibu LLC, that one. And this is a different guy associated with, with that who is also um, who is also suing Mauricio because he got gypped too out of a $4.5 million commission. Essentially, because Mauricio was doing this scheme where he would lowball his clients, and then on the back end, he would be a part of the team that would buy the house, and then they would flip it for a huge profit. Now, not only does that scam his clients, but it also scams other real estate agents, which is why this guy, Seagal, was suing him. He's like, hey, I had a client that wanted to buy that, the property for a higher price, but you never told your, your clients about the offer. So now I'm missing out on sales. I'm missing out commission. That's fraud because he's not just defrauding his clients. He's frauding other real estate agents as well. So this is pretty deep. This is pretty deep. Ooh, 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 ooh. So that was another one. Okay. Let's see here. All right. Now let's move on to the issue. And this is from law.com. Let's move on to the new case with Bank of America and Merrill Lynch and that one. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, now we're going to law.com. Okay. Now, I just want to preface the law.com one where this seems to be more like a press release that was sent out. 
So we're going to make sure we say allegedly with this one, this one is rumored. We still need more information. We still need more verification around this particular story. But I did want to share it just because it is out there. It's in the public domain. People are talking about it. But this one, we really need to wait and see if this is a real lawsuit, if it's legitimate and what's going to happen with it. But let's just talk about it anyway. Okay. New cases allege Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, aided and abetted Real Housewives, Tom and Erica Girardi, massive fraud scheme, and posing as victims' father and widow to steal $27.459 billion of victim sovereign's tower settlement and purchase of Spelling Manor. Bank still refusing to help victims. Okay. The unopposed civil case for negligence is one is is for the return from Berkshire Hathaway owned Bank of America Corporation for the victim and plaintiff, Shaman and CEO of the Hollywood Land Development Company, LLC, Nicholas Phipps White, $27.479 billion sovereign tower settlement issued as a U.S. Treasury check. In addition to the return of the victim's home from the West Coast escrow company, a subsidiary of Anywhere Real Estate Inc. Titled by Fidelity National Title, a subsidy of, of Fidelity National Finance, Financial. Okay. The negligence case filed more than a year ago on June 7, 2021. Nicholas Phelps White versus Bank of America and Merrill Lynch, Pierce, Finner, and Smith Incorporated, which is part, which in part will assist the 500 plus victim owed 50. $517 million of the Girardi bankruptcy has been assigned to former U.S. Navy JAG, the Honorable Judge Mark Bloomstein of the Miami-Dade County, Florida 11th Circuit Court. An additional civil fraud case was filed on July 2, 2022 in the United States District Court of the Central District of California with the Honorable Federal Judge George H. Wu. Okay. Nicholas Phelps White versus Anywhere Real Estate Inc. for Anywhere Real Estate Inc. for the return of the victim's home by correcting the grant deed for the plaintiff regarding the property located, I'm not going to dox anybody, also known as the Spelling Manor, which was purchased by the victim's funds from Bank of America Merrill Lynch Global Consumer Account without his knowledge on June on July 2nd, 2019. The unopposed Bank of America lawsuit alleges that the defendants, Bank of America CEO Brian T. Monahan and Merrill Lynch's president, Andrew Sig, were negligent in allowing a global Merrill Lynch consumer account to be fraudulently opened three years ago on June 7, 2019. At the Merrill Lynch Coral Gables, Florida location, more than 3,000 miles away from and without the plaintiff's knowledge an existing cup as an existing customer of Bank of America and resident of California with fraudulent Italian passport and forged unrecorded birth certificate for the plaintiff by disgraced and disbarred attorney Tom Girardi, naming 83-year-old Girardi as his father and a fraudulent unrecorded merit certificate naming 51-year-old Erica Girardi, posing as a fictitious quote, Erica White, as his wife and now widow. The fraudulent Italian passport Bank of America except it was illicitly obtained from the Italian consulate in San Francisco by Tom Girardi, who was actually born in Italy and immigrated to the U.S. in 1954. With now expired immigration papers, Girardi could face deportation from the United States. Disgraced Tom Girardi's 51-year-old wife, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reality performer Erica Nicole Girardi, a.k.a. Erica Jane, Fraudently, fraudulently posed as a fabricated Erica White to perpetuated to be his wife and widow of plaintiff Nicholas Phelps White, chairman and CEO of the Hollywood Land Development Company in California. Do, 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 do. This is a lot. Let's get to Mauricio. One second. Okay. Okay, you guys. One second. Because this is a lot.
Hit that like button, you guys. Hit that like button. Okay, here we go. The violations by the realtors and attorneys regarding the spelling manner, which include fellow real reality cast members Rick Hilton of Hitton and Highland and Mauricio Umansic of the agency, in addition to Cobble Banker Reality Tony Papillo, Jade Mills, and Michael Caruso, broker for the California for the agency, have been reported to the California Department of Real Estate for investigation. Attorney misconduct complaints have been filed to the California State Bar on Tom Girardi of the now defunct Girardi and Keith law firm. In addition to Bank of America's owner, Berkshire Hathaway's vice chairman owner, and Berkshire Hathaway's attorney. Woof, you guys. It's a lot. So this is a lot. And let me break it down really quickly. So essentially what happened is allegedly there was fraudulent real estate dealing with Tom Girardi acting as, you know, the the lawyer, Erica Girardi allegedly dressing up as like the widow in order to get the funds. And then Mauricio, and they're saying Rick Hilton, if not his agents from Hilton and Highland. So I'm not sure how true this particular report is. Again, we need more information. We're in on the fraudulent selling of the spelling manor. And they're all wrapped up in this one big $27.4 billion lawsuit. Do, 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 do. It says, in addition, attorney complaints were submitted on California attorney Dennis Roach of Clinton Development, Inc., who posed as a fraudulent property matter for the plaintiff's property spelling manner. It's a lot, you guys. It's a lot. Again, for this one, we're going to wait for more information, but it's out there. It is out there. But now let's talk about the fallout. Okay, let's talk about the fallout. Now, you might have always been wondering, well, you know, how come Rick Hilton never promoted Mauricio to partner? That's why he had to leave. Okay, okay, okay. Well, let's see here. This is according to All About the Tea, because remember, if you're going around doing fraudulent business, it might catch up with you. So this says, jumping ship, top-ranking employees quit Mauricio Umansky's real estate firm to work with competitor Kathy Hilton's husband company amid his legal drama. Okay, so this says there is a mass exodus going down over at Mauricio Umansky's real estate firm known as the agency amid his $32 million lawsuit over a shady real estate transaction. In 2018, four topping ranking agency employees, Danny Brown, Jay Harris, uh, Leonard Rabinowski, and Jack Friedkin, all jumped ship and joined competitor Hilton and Highland reports the real deal. Hilton and Highland is owned by Mauricio Umansky's brother-in-law and enemy, Rick Hilton. Issues between Mauricio and Rick have existed for years, which have caused a serious rift between sisters Kyle Richards and Kathy Hilton's families. Mauricio worked for, real for Rick Hilton for many years, then left abruptly to start a competitive real estate firm. Rumors swirled that Mauricio left under shady circumstances. Okay. Then longtime partners Cindy Ambuel and David Clementine quit in March, followed by managing director Don Heller left, followed by Stephen Siligoff, director of residential estates, and top producer Dan Orbach walked away over the summer. To sum up the bloodbath that has recently taken place at the agency, 45 agents have left the firm between January 2018 and June 2019, many of them big producers. That's about 15% of the agency's licensed brokers. The departures come as the agency battles a lawsuit by Sweetwater Malibu LLC, the company owned by Malibu Mansion at the center of the lawsuit. According to court documents, Mauricio and the agency violated duties as a real estate broker and fraud. Dun, 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 dun. And then Mauricio had the audacity to clap back. So this is what his response was when he 
lost 15% of his agency and 45 of his agents left because of the fraud and the lawsuits and the deception. It says Mauricio Umansky addressed this feud with Rick Hilton and doesn't give a SHIT about the 45 agents that quit his real estate firm. Umansky is finally addressing the mass exodus of his workforce, scandalous lawsuits, and beef with his brother-in-law, Rick Hilton. As reported, 15% of Mauricio Umansky's company, the agency's top-ranking employees, have resigned since 2018 and joined various competitors, including Hilton and Highland. Ironically, Hilton and Highland is owned by Mauricio Umansky's brother-in-law and arch enemy, Rick Hilton. In an interview with Iman Magazine, Mauricio Umansky shrugs his shoulders in response to 45 members of his staff quitting, roughly 50% of his labor pool. He says, look, we're not immune to losing agents. We're not immune to the compass lure of money. We've lost some good agents. Out of the 45 agents that we've lost, I think probably lost six good ones, okay? The other 40, quite frankly, I don't like to talk about bad. I don't like to talk about bad. I don't like to talk bad about people, but I don't give a a shit about okay they actually opened up space for us to be able to bring in those 110 wow he had some words he had some words he justifies the loss with a mathematical equation explaining that the company hired 155 new agents during the same time frame and that 45 agents left which would give them a net gain of 110 Mauricio, go back to school. Nobody cares about your math equation. Now, let's get into the cheating. Now that we've covered the fraud, and just as a quick recap on the fraud, we know that Mauricio's scheme is this. He lowballs clients. Allegedly, this is a scheme, even though he has lawsuits out there. We're just going to protect the channel, allegedly, allegedly. This is his scheme. He lowballs his clients on their property. And then on the back end, he is a part of the people who are buying the property. And then he will go and flip it for a major profit. The example of this is the one big lawsuit that we all talk about where he sold a Malibu mansion for about 32 million. Didn't disclose to his client that he was also purchasing, purchasing it. A year later, he flipped it for about 70 million. So making about a $40 million profit. He was then sued by other real estate agents who missed out on commission. He was then sued by the client, and allegedly they had some form of settlement, but this was not the first time, maybe not the last time. And that's why people are like, well, how did they make so much money in such amount of time? Well, if you are making, you know, $40 million fraudulently off of one pop, imagine how much money he's made over you know, the decades long that the agency has been open if this is the scam that he's been doing on his clients and other real estate agents. Okay, now let's get into the cheating allegations. So it's not just Mauricio on the hook who has their cheating allegations. There has also been allegations that Kyle is actually cheating as well, or she has cheated or is cheating, and that they might have their own um, open marriage. Now, this is from Celeb Buzz, and I'll read the quote. It says, maybe he wasn't technically cheating, referring to Mauricio, because as we all know, Mauricio has decade, decades-long accusations of being a cheater, being a philanderer, a philanderer, all of that stuff. Years before the show started, my good friend in college would go to the city and hook up with, quote, Paris Hilton's aunt Kyle, the DM read. And I'm going to read the article so we'll know who the DM is talking about. But I wanted to just start the cheating allegations with the allegations against Kyle herself. We didn't think anything about her at the time, didn't know she was married, etc. But every time she'd come to New York, she'd call him. When the show aired, I was truly shocked. This was around 2005, 2007, by the way. So there has been allegations that not only is Mauricio a cheater, but Kyle is a cheater. But like it says, if they do have this open marriage, if they do have this sort of arrangement, and I'll get more into it when I read the article, then is it actually cheating if, you don't, if you're not in a monogamous marriage? So that is a huge question. 
And we all know Kyle did write a book before. And in the book, she said, hey, if you cheat on your spouse once, you get a pass. Don't tell them. So maybe they do have some sort of arrangement. Maybe they have some sort of open marriage. But I just wanted to start out with the allegations against Kyle. Now, let's get into some of the allegations against Mauricio. Don't worry, you don't have to read that. I will read it for you. So this is from Celeb Buzz. It goes, new cheating allegations against Kyle Richards' husband resurface. Kyle Richards and Mauricio Umansky have one of the best on-screen relationships, but is it only for the Bravo cameras? New rumors have surfaced about Kyle and Mauricio's relationship or, or perhaps lack thereof. Many have accused Mauricio of cheating on Kyle, while others claim that the two have an open relationship. Others have gone so far as to claim that Mauricio and Dorit Kemsley are having an ongoing affair. So judge for yourself. Dana Omari, who runs the Instagram account at IG Famous by Dana, has shared numerous blind items and DMs about Kyle Richards and Mauricio Umansky. On May 15th, Dana posted a reel that hinted that Mauricio and Dorit were having an affair. The blind item in the reel read, this West Coast housewife would have the best storyline of all time if everyone knew about the affair she was having with her husband and another housewife. Fans then flooded her DMs with more information about Mauricio and Kyle's relationship. Some claim that Kyle and Mauricio have an agreement, that they're allowed to do whatever they want as long as no one finds out. Okay, this is one of the DMs, quote, I live in Dallas and I've seen him walking through the lobby of the Crescent. Nobu is in the same building with his arm around a lady that was not Kyle. One DM read. Another DM reads, they have an agreement that he can do whatever he wants as long as he's never caught. He cheated with my friend's coworker and I have a friend that works in television and she also confirmed he's had many girlfriends. Oof. Dana's next story featured numerous DMs that backed up the first one. Some said they thought it was well known that Mauricio sleeps around, while others said they have witnessed him doing similar things in New York, Miami, and Las Vegas. Okay, now... I also heard from a source that there was this woman who said she was out and she ran into Mauricio at this like, you know, restaurant place and Kyle was there. I believe that they were there with maybe PK and Dorit or Erica and uh, something like that. But Kyle was there and they ended up. And again, this is what I heard. I'm not saying this is the truth. This is what I heard from a source that they then went and had sex in the bathroom. And then he tried to give her his number or something like that. And, and he and she like either took it or she didn't. And then he went back out and continued to have, you know, lunch or dinner or whatever with his wife. That's just one of the rumors that is out there that was circling around that was sent to a lot of different bloggers. OK, now let's see. But that wasn't all because another fan submitted some juicy information about Kyle and her escapades as well. That's right. And that's what we just read about with, you know, Kyle and her own alleged affairs and her own, you know, alleged hookup buddy. Now, let's get even more into it because it continues with more alleged affairs. Another DM accused Mauricio of having in a relationship with Kendra Wilkinson. She is the blonde who is, um, she was in The Girl Next Door. She was a Hugh Hefner bunny. She was in that reality show. Okay. Another DM accused Mauricio of having a relationship with Kendra Wilkinson, a former Playboy bunny and star of Girls Next Door, who now works at Mauricio's real estate company. Quote, I heard from a very reliable source that he and Kendra Wilkinson had a fling. It's known that women try and seduce their way into the agency they wrote. I've heard the same from a friend. He definitely cheats and it's within certain circles. In a final DM added that he's had a relationship with another reality star as well. Quote, same rumor with Vanessa Villila. 
from Selling Sunset. You, I don't know if you guys watch Selling Sunset. I do. It's on Netflix. It's basically what buying Beverly Hills is a copy of. So they're selling Sunset, which is, you know, beautiful women selling real, real estate in, you know, Los Angeles. And then buying Beverly Hills is basically like a knockoff of selling Sunset. And this girl, she's the one in the middle. She's the brunette with the blue eyes. She's on that show. Okay. And she is a an alleged real estate agent because there's also questions around, are these just actors? Because she used to be a soap star in Mexico. So they're like, are these just actors who are playing real estate agents? Quote, reality? Who knows? Anyway, same rumor with Vanessa Valile from Selling Sunset, why she left the agency, the source said. Okay. They have to be in an open relationship, Dana concluded. There's no way all of this, quote, cheating is going on, not in Kyle's town. Dun, 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 dun. So those are some rumors. But, you know, there was something else I found. There is something else I found. A lot of people say Kyle is in denial. A lot of people say Kyle makes sure to keep the majority of the cheating allegations out of the press. She tries to suppress it and everything. But there was one rumor that could not be suppressed, okay? Could not be suppressed. And I don't know if you guys have heard this. This happened allegedly in 2013. But allegedly, so these are the women that he's allegedly cheated with, right? <sighs> but this is also a woman that he allegedly cheating with. So this came out in 2013. There was a rumor going around that Mauricio had an affair with a transgender escort by the name of Tony Newman. And this is her. So this is one of the YouTube videos I found of her telling her story. She has a book called I Rise. And in the book, she talks about um, Mauricio being one of the clients of different prostitutes, of different street walkers, and of, you know, kind of liking transgender women. And again, I just want to say this disclaimer, anytime on our show, we ever talk about, you know, someone being transgender or gay or their sexuality or their identity, it's not it's coming from a place of respect and inclusion. So I'm not saying transgender as a way to be disrespectful to this woman. And I'm not saying this as a way to be disrespectful to Mauricio or to the LGBTQIA or trans community. I'm just reporting on what was said. And so we're going to make sure to remain respectful of all people. So I just wanted that disclaimer. Okay, now if you can see in the red, it says, let me read it to you. And then the red arrows is what I'm talking about, okay? In part two of our interview with former transgender escort and author Tony Newman, we not only got more juicy details about big name celebrities who are living life on the down low, but also we got Tony's view on the racial and social economic issues that leads transsexuals into a world of prostitution. Tony reveals that Will Smith is indeed an open bisexual relationship with wife Jada Pinkett and the, and the boom of all that the celebrity that she had an escort counterpart, Miss Carmine, was having. An affair with that, she, okay, so in an affair with that she couldn't mention at the time of the interview due to contractual reasons was Mauricio Umansky, husband of Beverly Hills housewife fame, Kyle Richards. Okay. Now, Tony Newman has said that, you know, she's had sex with Will Smith, with LL Cool J, uh, Puff Daddy, not just her, but like, you know, the circle that she was with of the different, you know, prostitutes and set workers and all of that. You guys can do a deeper dive into that. I'm not getting into the Will Smith territory. I'm not getting into the LL Cool J or the Puff Daddy you, you guys can just Google that, and it, I'm telling you, it's all there. I'm just going to stick to the Mauricio Umansky piece of it. But this is the woman who said that. And I'm going to read to you 
So this is her. This is Toni Newman, and she has a book out about her life, and it's called I Rise. And in the book, she details Marie Selyumansky being one of the clients. Now, I'll read it to you because I know that's probably really small, but I just wanted to make sure that I cite it in my sources, and I wanted to make sure that you guys saw where I'm getting this information from because this is not me saying this. This is the information I found through my research. Okay. Did you guys notice that it said due to contractual reasons, she couldn't, um, in the interview, talk about Mauricio, but the fact that they even included it and the fact that she talks about it in her book, if this was not true, and he does deny it, and we'll, 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 um, I'll read you his denial. Of course, he's going to deny it. But if it's not true, why not sue her? Why not sue her and put a gag order on her? Why is she allowed to write about it in her book? Why is she allowed to have it in the notes and videos and interviews that she's done if it's not true? I mean, I would, I, I don't know. I'm just thinking if I'm a married man and there's a transgender sex worker saying I had threesomes with them and they're putting it in their memoir, I would probably sue if I had the means and money the way Mauricio does if it were not true. But it didn't say because of a lawsuit. It didn't say because of a gag order. It said contractual reasons. So is she in a contract with Mauricio? Oh, my goodness gracious. My goodness gracious. Okay, so this is from the press archive of Tony's book. Let me read you the excerpt where they talk about um, Mauricio. Okay. Give me a second just to find it real quick with all of this stuff, and we'll get it, because it's a lot. It is a lot. All right. One sec, you guys. Hit that like button while I pull it up. Hit that like button while I pull it up. Okay, one second, guys. I'm just going to pull it up on my screen and read it to you guys. All right, here we go. Get ready. All right, former transgender escort, escort outs more celebrities. In part two of our interview with former transgender escort and author Tony Newman, we not only get more juicy details about big name celebrities who are living life on the down low, but we also got Tony's view. Okay, we already said that. That's right. Okay. A Beverly Hills fame. All right. Real Housewives star Kyle Richards hit by claims her husband cheated with a female prostitute and transsexual, and transsexual escort. Kyle Richards nearly quit the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills over allegations that her husband, Mauricio Umansky, cheated on her and now faces new claims he was involved in a kinky threesome. The 44-year-old reality TV star was talked out of leaving last month by the show's producers, but new, re new revelations of an alleged threesome involving her husband, a female escort, and a transsexual prostitute have surfaced. Okay, now I'm going to keep reading, and this is also from it right here. This is also from her Tumblr, and it says, Former Hollywood mistress Carmen, a.k.a. Jessica Bess, once worked with transgender Tony Newman, a.k.a. Mistress Terry, as a, as a kanji and Lacey Call Girl team, and guess what? Beverly Hills housewives Kyle Richards' husband, Mauricio Umansky, was their client. Okay? Now, it goes on to say, whew, you guys, this is a lot. All right. Kyle and 42-year-old Mauricio, remember, this was written years ago, so they're obviously older now. Kyle and 42-year-old Mauricio have been married for 17 years and have three daughters together, Alexia, Sophia, and Portia. Cheating allegations. Mauricio Umansky, shown in March with wife, with wife college in Las Vegas, have been dogged with another allegation of philandering. Mauricio has been the subject of philandering rumors, and Star Magazine this week added fuel with its report of a wild sex threesome. The magazine interviewed a transgender former prostitute who claimed that her female escort partner 
brought Mauricio back to their home after picking him up at the ho at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. Okay. Wow. Tony Newman, a transsexual known as Mistress Terry, said she and her escort partner, Mistress Carmen 29, ran their sex business out of their out of their apartment in Los Feliz area of Los Angeles. Longtime marriage, Kyle and Mauricio, shown last month in Beverly Hills, California, have been married for 17 years, blah, 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 blah. Okay, then it goes on to say, we had many high-end clients between 2003 and 2005, Mauricio being one of them, said 50-year-old Newman, who recently released the memoir, I Rise, detailing her life as a prostitute. Newman said the duo worked by having Mistress Carmen take men into her room where she would offer them the option of having a transsexual partner come in. Quote, Mauricio went for the threesome option and in a kinky twist asked both of them to dress up as police officers. Newman said, season four, Kyle recently dealt with allegations that Mauricio was cheating on her from her reality show castmates. Mauricio denied the claims by Newman and Mistress Carmen, calling them false and utterly ridiculous. Kyle, who is the aunt of Paris Hilton, was confronted last month by co-stars Brandy Glanville and Lisa Vanderpump over Mauricio's alleged infidelities. She reportedly refused to listen to them and was so upset she called producers to quit the show, but was talked out of it. Wow. Do 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 i mean again this isn't new tea this allegedly came out in 2013 but i think it's explosive tea and it might be new tea to a lot of people i had never heard of it prior to doing some of these deep dives into everything there are even more allegations and everything so this has been reported by multiple outlets. It was on Gossip Jacker. It was on the Daily Mail. It was in No, They Didn't. So let's see what some of the other, let's see what the Daily Mail had to say. Now, it will repeat some of the information we already got, but I think it's good just to read another source, particularly because this is such a sensitive topic. So I do want to cite my sources and read um, another source. So this is from the Daily Mail, okay, you guys? It says, Real Housewife star Kyle Richards hit by claims her husband cheated with a female prostitute and transsexual escort. And this is from the Daily Mail because I'm citing all my sources. This is not from me, okay? Kyle Richards nearly quit the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills over allegations that her husband, Mauricio Umansky, cheated on her and now faces new claims he was involved in a, kink, in a kinky threesome. The 44-year-old reality TV star was talked out of leaving last month by the show's producers for new revelations of an alleged threesome involving her husband, a female escort, and a transsexual prostitute have surfaced. Kyle and 42-year-old Mauricio have been together for 17 years and have three daughters together, Alexia, Sophia, and Portia. Mauricio has been the subject of philandering rumors and Star Magazine this week added fuel with the report of a wild sex threesome. The magazine interviewed a transgender former prostitute who claimed that her female escort partner brought Mauricio back to their home after picking him up at the Hotel Roosevelt at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. Tony Newman, a transsexual known as Mistress Terry, said she and her escort partner, Mistress Carmen 29, ran their sex business out of their apartment in their Los Feliz area of Los Angeles, California. We had many high-end clients between 2003 and 2005, Mauricio being one of them, said the 50-year-old Newman, who recently released the memoir, uh, the memoir, I Rise, detailing her life as a prostitute. Newman said the duo worked by having Mistress Carmen take men into her room, where she would offer them the option of having her transsexual partner come in. Mauricio went for the threesome option, and in a kinky twist, asked both of them to dress up as police officers, Newman said. Oof, Mauricio has denied the claims by Newman and Mrs. Carmen, calling them false and utterly ridiculous. Kyle, who is the aunt of Paris Hilton, was confronted last month by co-stars Brandy Glanville and Lisa Vanderpump over Mauricio's alleged infidelity. She reportedly refused to listen to them and was so upset she called producers to quit the show but was talked out of it. So that repeated 
I, I wanted to read another source. I know we repeated some of the same details, but since it's such a sensitive topic, I wanted all my bases covered and I wanted to report from multiple sources, okay? Now, my question is, if this is not true, how did they not sue the Daily Mail? How did they not sue Star Magazine? How did they not sue Gossip Jacker? How did they not sue Tony? It's in her book. It's in her memoir. They had a, a, a contractual agreement. Were they paying her? Like, I'm confused. I'm confused. But, I mean, that is what the word on the curb, that is what the word on the curb is. That is the sitch. But I want to know what you guys think. So I'm going to start, you know, <sighs> wow, it's a lot, you guys. It's a lot. So I'm just going to start right here. So G. Soria says, why not ask you for defamation if he about that life? Exactly. Exactly. That's my whole thing. It's like, you can come out. You know what? Let's read his denial. Because I think that sometimes when people deny something, they tell on themselves within the denial. So let's read the denial and then we can talk about it, okay? Let's get into it. So this is from Star Magazine. I'm citing my sources. This is from Star Magazine. It goes, Mauricio issues denial. In a new development on the Mauricio Imansky story that Star reported this week, in an an attorney representing Mauricio has issued this, sta this statement exclusively to Star. Mr. Umansky states that the allegations that I engaged in any sexual relations with two escorts as alleged in this article are absolutely false and have zero truth whatsoever. The alleged source of those accusations is either lying or has confused me with another person. I am faithfully and happily committed to my wife of 18 years, Kyle Richards, and our children, and I am saddened to learn that someone would spread these ugly and vicious false rumors regarding me. I do not intend to comment further on these false and utterly ludicrous accusations. All right, that honestly, listen, Mauricio, you'd look guiltier now. You just should have said nothing. If you weren't going to sue for defamation, you should have said nothing. Because if you already have a lawyer involved, why are you issuing a statement to Star Magazine? Why are you not suing Star Magazine and threatening them and threaten them and tell them to take it down because they're spreading lies about you? Every single day, NBC tries to threaten my channel. They try to get me demonetized and block my videos. Every single day, NBC does because I'm talking about the housewives. So I'm confused as to how Mauricio isn't why would you submit a statement rather than issue a cease and desist or issue a, you know, something saying, take this down. This is defamation. This is not true. You are doing lies. Mauricio, I think you've dug yourself in a bigger hole with your denial. It just makes no sense. Janet says, if Netflix keep him, well, we know they are all crooked. <laughs> at this point you guys know me in a conspiracy i don't trust any big business i don't trust any of them hey steve c not really surprised at any of this especially when you think about how much of their lives they hide very true hey janet kyle wants to read gone because she knows what mo said about picking her before his own wife mm -mm 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 -mm. Hey, Bubbles, I couldn't live this way. No matter the amount of money, that would get old. I'm glad I'm broke AF, but now I know my hubs loves me and we have a lot of love with our babies. <laughs> hey, Only by Grace, thank you for this deep dive, Candy. It's dirty, explains how they amass their wealth so quickly and why Kyle can't find peace in her soul. Yeah, she says it's anxiety, but I don't, I don't know if it's anxiety or if it's something else, you know? Hey, Janet, Steve C. Exactly. That's why Kyle gets everyone to do her dirty work. Foxy says, yikes, Mo have cheated a lot. Hey, Melanie. Um, it would be funny to see if they take this up in Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and compare it to how they treated Denise. I assume they will show it. They will, sh they will shove it under the carpet. I mean, that's the thing. They already have because this came out in 2013. You know, Tony's book came out in 2013 and that's when she was exposing everybody. 
And I listened to some of her interviews and she said that she took lie detector tests, like legitimate, not the fake ones that, you know, um, Chris Jenner's doing on the late night TV show, like legitimate lie detector test. And she passed them. She passed. And this is another thing, you know, she has said, and I'm not doing a deep dive into the other celebrities that she's talked about, you know, but she hasn't been sued. She hasn't been silenced. You could go to, you could go to amazon.com right now and you could buy this book. So she hasn't been sued. She hasn't been forced to take anything down. She hasn't been silenced. Thank goodness. Because unfortunately, a lot of trans people have violence against them, particularly when they start to speak up, particularly when they start to out people. So thank goodness she is alive and well. To my knowledge, what from what I saw, I believe I believe she's still alive and, and you know, hopefully doing very well. But she hasn't been silenced. You know, I, I found all this out on the Internet. It's still out there. So again, these are all allegations, accusa accusations, alleged and rumored. I'm just thinking, if this is not true, then how is it still allowed to exist in a memoir? How is it still allowed to exist in Daily, Ma Daily Mail and Star Magazine and gossip on in her book? You know, and and just saying I'm no longer going to talk about this. That doesn't mean that you're innocent. That just means you want it to go away. So maybe, um, maybe um, what's her name? Kim Richards had a lot of talk about when she said, "Let's talk about the husbands." Seems like there's a lot of husbands that might need something to be talked about. You know, you never know. Hey, G Sawyer, didn't know Greasy Mo liked to play in the chocolate boxes. I mean, isn't it funny how they always like a little bit of color? They always like a little bit of chocolate with their swirl. It always comes out. Hey, Janet, only by Grace. Exactly. Foxy, this is right, Candy. So true. Thank you, Foxy. This rumors have been out for a long time. Yes, this was out since 2013. But how come they've never talked about it directly on the show? It said Kyle wanted to quit over it. Hey, Mary, wait, that makes sense if Mauricio is gay. Which, which there's nothing wrong with that. Exactly. Allison from the show Medium told Kyle the show that she would never be enough for Mauricio, something like that. Yeah. The Medium said uh, he will never emotionally fulfill you. And once the kids are out the house and grown, you'll have nothing in common. Hey, Janet. Kyle is the one that planned to take down the Kathy Hilton. And now Paris and Nikki are after Auntie Kyle. So true. She had to skip the um, baby shower because I don't think she was welcome there. Hey, Bubbles at G, now you know it's how to turn down chocolate. Mo knows it too. <laughs> exactly. Hey, Luz, even here in Ireland, everyone knew the Daily Mail don't print without 100% proof. Wow. I mean, that's what I'm saying. That's why I wanted to read multiple articles. So thank you for giving me the grace for repeating some information. But I just wanted to make sure my bases were covered. You guys know how people are out here trying to take down channels and sending cease and desist and trying to get people to monetize and all that stuff. So I just wanted to make sure I covered my bases. And I also wanted to make sure I did my due diligence. I found this in multiple sources. It was in Star. It's in her book on Amazon. It's in the Daily Mail. It's on her press on, on her press website. Um, it's quoted and oh no, that they didn't. It's I, I found multiple sources that were saying this. So I just wanted to cover my bases. Hey, Barbara, I heard this a while ago. Not as much detail, but you're right about this information. Yep. Yep. Hey, Bubbles at Mary. Oh, my God. I remember that. That way he would never emotionally fulfill her. Yep. You guys are laughing. Holly says, Luz, world travels fast. LOL. I love it. Janet says, that would be the psychic exact with the, yep, that was what the psychic exactly said. Drew Sawyer says, I think they both, Greasy, Mo and Kyle, maybe switch hitters. I mean, they were saying that her and, oh, somebody gave me a super sticker. Thank you, Selma, for the super sticker. Oh, let me see if I can find it. They were saying that they were um, swingers and everything. This is the thing. I don't think that they would swing with PK and Dorit. Thank you, Salma, for the super sticker. Um, 
but I'm kind of thinking like maybe there really was something going on with Mauricio and Dorit. Either a hit it and a quit it and Dorit caught feelings. I don't know. But to me, it seems like Dorit is more invested in him than he's invested in her. <laughs> I'm saying it like I know it, but you know what I'm saying? Crazy. Hey, Bubbles, if Epstein was still a thing, I think we'd find Mo on that list as sick as it is. Hey. Caroline Sanberry was on the list. She was in his book. All that stuff. Okay, let's see what else you guys are saying. Yeah, Foxy says, Allison D called this out a long time ago. Exactly. Mary says, Janet Marie. Yeah, right. Yep. Bubble says, maybe that's why Kyle got so heated about that cause because she because I didn't think it was that big of a deal. So maybe it was already happening. Yeah, maybe it hit a nerve. Maybe it hit a nerve. Luz says, Holly, the Daily Mail is British owned and we get the European version. Yeah, the Daily Mail is a British owned um, uh, outlet. That is 100% true. It's a Daily Mail UK. All right, Russica says, juicy. Salma says, what about Erica said about Dorit and PK's marriage? I don't think Dorit and PK are going to get divorced. I think they're kind of like Bonnie and Clyde. You know, they're they're grifters and scammers and fraudsters together. You know, they, they're ride or die. Um, I think the whole Erica versus Dorit, I think it's starting out as a storyline. I think it's starting out as a way for them to control the narrative. I think it's starting out as a way for them to break up the faux Fox 5. But I think it's going to quickly devolve into a real beef. Because I think you can only fake fight with someone until you start to really fight with someone. So I think that they're playing with fire. That's what I think with that one. Let's see, you guys. Hey, Janet. She goes, we all know Erica is guilty as hell. I'm going to ask Andy Cohen if he give, if he gave back all those Disney stocks Erica gave Ben his son. Oh, you know he didn't. You know he didn't, please. Hey, Bubbles, I don't feel like Kyle has anxiety. I suffer from extreme, and my main problem is I care too much about others. Kyle doesn't care at all. No, I don't think Kyle has anxiety. I think there's just something wrong with her. It's just weird. She's just weird. You know what I mean? It's like, don't blame anxiety for your own guilty conscience and your own weird behavior. It's like, you don't want to defend your sister. I have anxiety. You know, you're, you're allegedly lying about your robbery. I have anxiety. It's like, no, you're just a shitty person, kind of. Holly says, uh, Janet, he says he never got them. Oop. Janet Bubbles, you're correct. Wow. Hey, Bubbles, I want to buy that Alam Garcelle's book just for support. Plus, it'd be a great read. I know, I know. She was spilling all the tea. Hey, Foxy. This is why Kyle is always stirring the pot and putting the light on the other housewives so we don't talk about her and Mo. Exactly. She is just like Rena, 100%. They like to point at other people and stir the pot with other people, but they don't want people to look at their own houses. You know, why is Harry always in Canada? Who is Harry in Canada with? You know, why is there this allegation out there that Mauricio was having a threesome with a trans... Um, a transsexual, transsexual person and, um, you know, a sex worker. Again, there's nothing wrong with sex work and there's nothing wrong with being transgender. So I just want to put another disclaimer out there. Anytime we talk about, you know, a sex worker or we talk about um, sexuality or identity, it, we're only talking about it because it's important in the context of what we're talking about but we do it from a place of love and respect and inclusivity. Since it is a, a sensitive topic, I did just want to repeat that. Okay. Hey, Bubbles at Foxy Agree. Just thought that's, that's just thought of it that way when you said it. And it's so accurate. She doesn't talk about her problems at all other than her sister. She doesn't talk about anything going on in her life. Oh, Farrah's getting married. Oh, Portia's by mitzvah. Oh, evil Kim, crazy Kathy, but she doesn't talk about anything in her own life. Like, how do you not talk about allegations that your husband was in a transgender threesome when you're on a reality TV show? How does that just not come up? And then she got so mad at Lisa Vanderpump when she was like, oh, maybe this is the young woman you're talking, you are seen with. Girl, bye. Jay says, sad that Kyle and Rena were complicit in trying to spread rumors about Denise. Exactly. And look at all that is out there about their lives. 100%. They were going off. Of, and honestly, 
I have said this since day one. I don't believe Brandy. I think Brandy lied. I think Brandy seized a moment. I think that she felt like she had enough plausibility to make it seem true. But I think Brandy lied. I think she made that up. I don't think that her and Denise hooked up. Maybe she wanted to hook up with Denise. But I just don't see it. Hey, Janet. Holy BS. Andy thanked her on Watch What Happens Live. And it was the biggest gift he got at the baby shower. Maybe that's why Andy Cohen's all of her butt the whole time. It's insane. Hey, Bubbles. That's why Kyle ran because he she didn't want mole being talked about. Exactly. If someone tried grabbing my sister's throat, I'd be right there. Exactly. If someone tried to grab my sister's throat and then also shank a wine glass, you couldn't stop me from popping off on them if it's my family. Hey, Fox that Bubbles, right. I do not think about that until now. She really is like Rena hiding her life on the show 100%. That's why she's so silent and so complicit when it comes to Rena and Erica, because she's just like them. She's just like them. She wants to use the show to promote her businesses, to promote Mauricio's businesses, to promote everything she has going on. But when you really think about it, what do we know about Kyle's life? Like, really, what do we know about Kyle's life? that she shows on the show, not much. All she ever talks about is, oh, we're having this party, we're decorating this, oh, it's Portia's birthday. But then she wants to talk about her sisters. Oh, my sister's so mean to me. Oh, Kim's an alcoholic. Oh, Kathy's so pretentious, blah, 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 blah. Erica this, da, 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 Garcelle that, blah, 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 blah. But she doesn't talk about anything in her own life. This is the juiciest storyline in the world. Are you kidding me? Janet Martin says, Joe, I could not agree more. Only by Grace says, I wonder if this is what Kyle said, not the racial or homo. Oh, oh, I wonder if this is what Kathy said, not the racial or homo slurs. This is worse. I mean, that's a really good point. Oh, thank you so much, Salma, for this, for the um for the super chat. Let me see if I can find it. And then I want to get back to this quote by Only Grace. Because that's actually a really good idea. But I do want to say thank you. Oh, I'm missing the super chats. I'm sorry, you guys. Tracy Renee Rivera says, Mauricio is a cancer. Dorit is a cancer. It is a thing. <laughs> thank you so much for the super chat, Tracy. Oh, thank you, Salma. Dorit and Mo is a thing. So true. So true. Hey, everyone. All right, let me see. I want to make sure I didn't miss anybody else's super chat. Thank you so much, Tracy. I appreciate it. Thank you, Salma. All right. If I missed anybody super chat, I apologize. Um, I'm doing the best I can. So thank you guys so much. But I did want to get back to that quote from um, Only Grace. I can't find it now, but I want to get back to that quote by what Only Grace says. So she's basically what she said is, Oh, thank you, Janet. Genesis Candy is my go-to YouTube now that I found her. Yes. Welcome, welcome. Now, this is the thing. What, and, and this is me thinking right now, based on what um, Only by Grace said, you know, maybe this is what Kathy was talking about when she popped off in Aspen and not saying a homophobic and not saying the N-word. But if you break it down, Tony Newman is a transgender black female. What they're accusing Kathy of saying is the N-word and something homophobic. That could apply to someone like a Tony Newman. Now, I'm not saying I think Kathy said anything like that about Tony. That's not what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is if she did bring up the allegations that Mauricio was with, you know, Tony, you know, Mistress Terry as she went by and her partner, Miss Carmen, and she brought it up. Well, saying she said the N-word and something homophobic, I mean, it really does apply to someone like a Tony if someone was trying to be disrespectful towards her. That's just me thinking out loud based on that comment. So we'll have to noodle on that one a little bit more. But it was crazy. Hey, Foxy, Rena and Kyle are so similar as women, jealous and hiding the truth about their husbands. That part. Hey, Babs, I think Mauricio is a pig, and the way Durate puts PK in check, you know she isn't down with him. 
No, Dury, I think Dury and PK are, I think they're living separate lives. Like, I think she's here and I think he's in London. Because why is he always working? Why is he always traveling? Why is he always gone? What is he doing? Hey, Luz, I was starting to, to think that Dury and Mo are at it. I'm thinking, I think something happened. And again, we're just doing allegations and rumors. And this is all opinion based. Nobody is stating facts. We don't know these people. But in my opinion, it does seem like something is fishy. There is a fly in the milk. The, the the body language, the everything to me does seem as if there is something going on between Mo and Dorit, whether it was a hit it and quit it and she caught feelings, whether it was a long-term affair. I just don't think that nothing happened. Hey, CM, um, it just gets me that Kyle, Erica, Dorit, and LR want to ruin all these other room all these other rumors while acting like their lives are off limits and squeaky clean. I know. How come we can't talk about the husbands? And Andy Cohen needs to do his job because there was one reunion. I think it was during the whole um, $32 million lawsuit where he brought up the lawsuit with Marisa and she goes, well, that's my husband. We don't talk about that. Like, we don't talk about my husband. That's his business. And Andy just like, let it go. But it's like, no, if your husband is on the show and if your husband is promoting his business, the agency, which she does every single scene. If I see one more agency hat, if I see one more agency t-shirt, I'm going to barf. If your husband is exploiting the show and profiting from the show, then what's going on with your husband should be, um, should be on the table to talk about. If your husband was like, no, I don't want any part of it. I don't want to be on the show. I'm not going to use the show to promote my business. I'm just your husband and I'm out. Almost like a Michael Darby. You know, Michael Darby is basically like, listen, Ashley, I don't want to be on the show. I want to do my dirt and I want to do my dirt in silence. I'm out. Just say we're getting separated so I don't have to film anymore. I'm out, right? If you did not want to participate and exploit the show, fine, off limits. But you can't have it both ways. You can't use the show to get money and to promote whatever you want to promote. The whole Aspen trip was nothing but a big real estate commercial for their for their Aspen home that they then went around that they then turned around and put on the market for nine point two five million dollars. So if you don't want to use the show to get money and to promote your businesses, fine. But if you're gonna use it, then we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about the fraud. We're going to talk about the affairs. We're going to talk about the alleged open marriage. We're going to talk about Kyle allegedly sleeping with, you know, young boys in New York. You know, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Luz is laughing. Grace says, well, Kyle's plan to hurt Kathy's sister backfired 100%. These are a bunch of criminals and ill morals people on Real, on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Just Garcelle and Sutton are moral. So true. Foxy says, Andy loves his mean girl group. He does. I, he likes being like a part of it. He likes being like a part of the mean girl crew. Hey, Tracy, thank you so much for the super chat. So Tracy Renee Rivera Fernandez says, Bravo needs to get their contracts together. 100%. Bravo needs to get their contracts together. Andy Cohen needs to, I don't even think he needs to get it together. I think Andy Cohen needs a pause. And we need to put somebody in that place who is unbiased, who watches the shows, who has a pulse on what's happening in the blogs, on Twitter, on the YouTube streets. We need somebody who is actually competent in the role. He is not competent during the reunions. If he was competent during the reunions, what he did to Carcel about when those evil ass witches threw her book in the trash and then laughed about it. And then he was more concerned about her recycling habits than he was about Garcelle, who was holding back tears from the level of disrespect she just received. If he was competent, moments like that would not happen. He would have been like, wait a minute, why did you throw her stuff in the garbage, in, in the trash can? That's hella disrespectful. Why do you guys have a separate group chat? Separate, but not private. So it's separate, meaning, Garcelle, you're not allowed to be in it, but we're going to tell you about it just so you know how much you don't belong. 
That's evil. If you want to have a private group chat, do you, boo-boo. But keep it private. The only reason to talk about a group chat that somebody is not in, in that person's face, is to hurt them. We have our own group chat that you're not in, and we use it to talk shit about you and snicker about you and to make fun of you. That's basically what was going on. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. Bab says, did anyone catch Andy's face and how he cut to break real quick after Kyle told her story about the burglar contacting her? He looked at Kyle as if to say, stupid crazy. Yes. 100% because she literally told on herself. Hey, Geek and Meow. Hi, Miss Candy. I just got here and I'm watching from the beginning. Yay. Welcome. Yes. Replay gang. Replay gang. Bab says it's so, oh, Bubbles. Bubbles says it's so high school. This is what my teacher and my daughter, what not to do. Exactly. It's just so disrespectful. Hey, Eileen. She goes, and Erica made a remark about her trying to separate the group. That's the, it's the gaslighting. Oh, we can't be friends with you because you're friends with Sutton and we can't get to know you. Oh, you saying that you think one of us is behind the bot separates the group. No, you have to separate the group. You said it. Erica said it at the Studio 54 party. I'm close to these women, not you. And Garcelle was like, I know you say that all the time. You know what I mean? Foxy says, Erica definitely was giving a dig to Garcelle, 100%. 100%. Janet says, um, Latrice uh, Kyle thought she was going to be queen, but it didn't work. Exactly. Holly says, Bubbles, I agree. Grace says, I agree. Janet. It's a lot, you guys. It's a lot. It's an absolute mess. There's fraud. Oh, hey, Latisse. Latisse says, I have often wondered what the majority dispute that caused the breakup of Lisa Vanderpump and Kyle's relationship. After Lisa let it left, it appeared that Kyle was elevated to head housewife in charge. 100%. I think that Lisa Renna thought once she got rid of, rid of LVP, she would become the HBIC, but it was Kyle. Lisa Renna just realized you're never going to be the HBIC. You just don't have it. You just don't. For as vile as Kyle is, if it's Kyle versus Lisa Renna, Kyle is still going to have the HBIC simply because she's A, the OG, B, she is the sister of Kim Richards and Kathy Hilton, and the show started out supposedly about to be the three of them. And Kyle is still more of that girl, only in comparison to like a Lisa Renna. Now, if you compare Kyle to Lisa Vanderpump or Garcelle or even a Denise, she can't hold a candle to them. And the only reason why she has her position is not because of who she is, but because of who she's connected to. So she should be thanking Kathy and thanking Kim that she even has this show. Because honestly, if Kyle didn't have Beverly Hills, what would Kyle really have? I don't think the agency would be what it is. And I don't think that she would have what she has. Nobody knew who Kyle Richards was before the show. We knew who Kathy Hilton was. People knew who Kim Richards was. I mean, I didn't because she was before my time, but like in her heyday, she was that girl. You know what I mean? And Kathy Hilton's a freaking Hilton. Kyle Richards is the one who needed the show. That's why she's the one who is still on it and is still doing everything she can. Oh, Natalia, thank you so much for the super sticker. Let me see if I can find it so I can say thank you. I got to start paying attention to my super stickers. I just go off on tangents and I forget. Thank you so much, so much for the super sticker. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Natalia, for the super sticker. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, you guys. Bubble says, and notice how hard it was for Garcelle sat there, a true classy adult. Yes, when someone hurt Rena's feelings, she has to storm off stage with a teddy bear. Uh, with the bunny? With the bunny? Oh my God, these women have no class. Janet says, and please mention what they did to Jax. Exactly. Exactly. That whole part. And the thing is, they all, like, for as scared as they are to be, quote, canceled or, quote, put on pause, these women really, really love to use race and threats and homophobia. Because think about it. 
things that they either said Kathy did, she said the N-word, a homophobic slur, or whatever, don't believe it. I think it's a bunch of BS. The bots went after Jax. Oh, we would have our knee on your neck if it wasn't for your white daddy, right? All of that situation. Lisa Renna's verified account posting uh, pictures of her with a, with a weapon saying, let me find me a Patrick, you know, leaked DMs from Lisa Renna saying that she wants a hitman out for Patrick and for Kathy Hilton. Like the level of racism and homophobia and violence these women project and, the, that, and that these women put out there is really disgusting when you look at it in totality. It's a lot. Posting a weapon and saying, let me find someone, saying you want to hit, talking about, you know, the N-word, this and that, and homophobia and this and that. And now Erica's coming out. Oh, I heard Kathy say the homophobic slur. When? Since when, Erica? You never said you said you heard her say it for the last 10, 11, 12 months. Now all of a sudden it's reunion part three and you want to say you heard it too? Where'd that come from? These women are playing with fire. You know, uh, Lisa Renna being like, oh, I'm going to get cancer if I don't talk about it. Oh, Harry Hamlin, you know, had a friend who R word a woman, you know, he assaulted the woman and that's why I can't defend Denise. Like they play with the worst things. It's too dark. It is just way too dark right now. It's a lot. It's a lot going after children. It's crazy. Hey, Roxanne, um, Garcelle, Sutton, Crystal, and Kathy made this season. You ladies are truly great. Yes, 100%. Grace says, at Foxy, I wouldn't touch it. I wouldn't touch it. Hey, Bubbles. Erica's looks like she slurs when no one is around. 100%. And the racial microaggressions, right? Oh, you're going to say to um, Garcelle's son, I want to have a threesome with your baby mama? Why? Because he's black? He has to have a baby mama? Why don't you call her what she is? His wife. I highly doubt if she was talking to a white guy, would she say, oh, I want to have a threesome with your baby mama. Oliver does not have a baby mama. Oliver has a wife. And there's nothing wrong with having a baby mama. I'm just talking about the racial microaggression. Lisa Rinna saying to Garcelle, oh, you have an attitude. Well, who the hell are you, Lisa Renna? You're not her mother. You're not her teacher. She's a grown woman. She's allowed to have an opinion. She's allowed to ask questions. And she's allowed to assert herself. That's not having an attitude. It's those microaggressions that are just too much. And then did you guys catch when Diana said, oh, because of my privilege? I, Garcelle, you should, you should work with me because I have the privilege of having the money for the lawyers and that blah, 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 blah. Why would you use the word privilege? What word usually becomes, becomes before the word privilege? White privilege. So because of your white privilege, Garcelle needs to bow down to you because you have to be the one to jump in when you're the one who's probably behind the bots in the first place. You got to really watch what these people say because they always tell on themselves. People say certain words for a reason. She used the word privilege for a reason. She used the word attitude for a reason. She used the word baby mama for a reason. That's why they're called microaggressions because on the surface, you might be like, whatever, that's no big deal. But when you look at it contextually and you look at it culturally and you look at it from a societal standpoint, they are heavily racially charged. Let's not forget when Lisa Renna said, oh, if I, if I fight with Garcelle, I'm going to be called racist. And then what did she say? I, I ain't scared of you hoes. When you think of the term hoes and you close your eyes, I guarantee you think of a black woman. Because that's a term that you, you would think of when you use the word like pimps and hoes. Right? Why, in the context of talking about Garcelle and racism, do you choose to use the word hoes? And then she's like, no, I'm talking about the trolls and the haters. But you didn't say trolls and you didn't say hater. You said hoes. And why? Again, it's another racial microaggression. Within the context that you say something, it becomes racially charged. These women 
are evil, but they're not stupid. They know what they're saying and they know what they're doing and they know what dog whistling is. And it's disgusting. It's really, really disgusting. It's too much. It's, it's too much. Janet says the caribou club said Kathy did nothing but treat all the staff with respect. Exactly. These women are just nut jobs. Hey, Bubbles, if you leave out microaggressions, then you won't be classified as that. People can read through the lines. Exactly. Exactly. Hey, Janet, I agree, Bubbles. That was definitely racist. 100%. And it's like, we're not stupid. We know what a microaggression is. You use certain wor words around certain people about certain races for a reason. For a reason. Eileen says she was in the book. Jeffrey Epstein's book or uh, Room 23 book? Mm-hmm. Janet says, Grace, no problem. Hey, Brene Bell. She goes, most people get anxious when they're lying. <laughs> Kyle, exactly. Her anxiety is because she's lying. You know what I mean? Grace says Garcelle is classy and amazing. Yes, she is. 100%. 100%. Well, fun. Oof. Hey, Donna, she goes, this show needs to be shut down, period. At least get rid of the races. Kyle, Rena, Erica, Dirty Diana, and maybe Crystal. Yeah, it's a hot mess. It's a hot mess. Holly says, EJ is a sloppy, racist drunk. She is very sloppy. She looks very, like, sloppy. Sloppy is a perfect word for it. Hey, Sam, I cannot watch the show. I stopped watching it after the show where Erica treated Garcelle's teenage son so bad, and then Kyle, Dorit, and spouses laughed about it. I watched your reviews. Oh, thank you for watching the reviews. I agree. It's getting really, really bad. A Foxy says, agree, Grace. Garcelle is great. Yes, she is. Holly is giving Donna the thumbs up. Bubble says, CM, agree. I want Garcelle and Sutton to have their own show on a different network. That would be glorious. I would love to do a Garcelle Sutton spinoff. Let's add Kathy in the mix, too. And, you know, with their friends, you know, their Hollywood friends and everything that they're doing. I would love to see that. Absolutely. I would love to see it. Love to see it. Hey, Babs. Lisa's always telling Garcelle that her tone, attitude, or face are doing something wrong. Meanwhile, Garcelle always minds her composure and emotions. LR is trash. No lies detected there, you guys. No lies detected there. Oof. All right, you guys, we did it. We have been on here for almost an hour and a half. It has been a lot. It has been a lot. It has been a lot. Janet says, Natalia, I love you. Name. I love the name. And the Caribbean Club did make a statement clearing Kathy. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to look that up and we'll do a video on it. I love you guys. We did it. Thank you so much for joining me through this deep dive. It's been a lot. And I want to know what you guys think. Put it down below. Do you believe the rumors about Mauricio? What do you think about the fraud cases? What do you think about the cheating allegations for both Kyle and Mauricio? Do you think they have an open marriage? What do you think about Tony Norman? Tell what Tony Newman said. Do you think he did have this, you know, trans affair threesome, you know, and everything that's out there? Let me know what you guys think. And I love you guys. Thank you for hanging out with me. And, you know, be sure to let me know what other deep dives do you want me to do? What other things do you want me to cover? And we can get it together and we can handle it. I love you guys so much. And I will see you next time. But before you head out, you know what to do. Smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it when we go live. Also, be sure to share this with a friend because a key key is always better with community. And don't forget to check out my description box down below and shop our love collection. Don't forget everything is alleged, rumored, and opinion-based. And with that, you guys, I love you. Bye. Welcome to Sugar Pills, a practical guide to self-care, where your host, writer, actor, and producer, Candy Washington, helps you live a more joyful life with a cheeky dash of pop culture news. Be sure to subscribe, leave a five-star review, and join the conversation on Instagram at Candy Washington. Let's go.